whilst it's been realised for many decades that cancer is a process driven by mutations within the cancer cells themselves, it's also very clear now that those cancer cells don't exist in isolation. And in fact, they undergo multiple kind of complicated interactions with both neighbouring cells in their local environment, so the tumour microenvironment, and also extracellular matrix molecules that just provide structure to the tumour. And really, uh, the focus of the session this afternoon will be trying to understand how those complex interactions affect the ultimate behaviour of cancer cells, both in terms of their ability to metastasize, so spread to other organs, and also how they respond to therapeutic interventions. First up, we have a, a talk from Ilaria Milanki, who is working on the process of metastasis, and she's got some very exciting findings that are soon to be published about how neutrophils, so these are a class of white blood cell, actually can uh, promote the metastasis of breast cancer cells and ways in which they communicate with the breast cancer cells. And this also kind of you know, highlights some suggestions for you know, ways in which you might want to therapeutically intervene with the process to reduce the spread of cancer. And um, following that, we have a, a talk from Helmut Augustin, who is at the DKFZ, so the German Cancer Center in Heidelberg. And he, for a long time, has really been trying to understand the process of how tumor blood supply works. So obviously, you know, tumors, you know, like other organs, need uh, both you know, nutrients and oxygen to be delivered, but also they need blood supply to you know, remove kind of metabolic products. And this has long been you know, an attractive target for cancer therapy, and there are indeed you know, cancer therapies that actually act on blood vessels that are you know, in use today. The difficulty is that you know, cancer blood vessels can be very variable and we really need to understand more about them to be able to effectively target them, not just to kind of get rid of them, but to make them kind of more normal, which means that they can actually deliver drugs better to the tumour, which is a, you know, a great area of excitement at the moment. In my presentation, uh, which comes at the end of the session, what we'll be really uh, asking is why do some targeted therapies not work as well as we'd hoped? So I mentioned kind of at the beginning that you know, cancer is really driven by mutations in the cancer cells and now there are actually some good you know, inhibitors against you know, some of the, those mutations. But the reality is, particularly when they're used in solid tumour treatment, um, that the, they don't really lead to cure. What happens is the tumours respond for a bit and then ultimately after a few months the therapy typically fails. And what we've been doing is we've been using intravital imaging, so actually looking with high cellular resolution to watch you know, how the cells respond and then don't respond in you know, mouse models of, of cancer. And then by learning from that and actually imaging the microenvironment at the same time as we image the drug response, we've unpicked connections between stromal fibroblasts, so a cell type within the tumour microenvironment, and the ability of melanoma cells to respond to a BRAF inhibitor. And this has really you know, thrown up a whole kind of new set of hypotheses about the interplay between these two cell types, and we've under, unpicked the kind of molecular basis of this and been able to propose and at least demonstrate the principle that by, you know, targeting that kind of communication between those two cell types, we can make the targeted therapies work more effectively. And this is obviously something with, you know, uh, we hope long-term potential. In the context of melanoma, there's been fantastic excitement in the last couple of years about the uh, you know, efficacy of immunotherapy in, you know, and this is harnessing the immune cells to um, really, you know, go after the melanoma cells and in some cases really lead to durable responses, which is a little bit different from the targeted therapies that I mentioned. Clearly what we need to you know, understand for the future is the interplay between the targeted therapies and the immunotherapies. And from a more personal perspective, you know, my group is focused on understanding these cancer-associated fibroblasts, would really like to understand how they cross-talk to you know, the immune cells within the tumour microenvironment and how by understanding that cross-talk better we might be able to improve the efficacy of some immunotherapy. There's all sorts of kind of things that I think are exciting going on in the lab. We're trying to unpick you know, new mechanisms of communication between cancer cells and the stroma. So one thing that we're working on now is not just kind of crosstalk mediated by soluble factors such as growth factors or chemokines, but actually the, you know, when the two cell types actually touch, come into contact with one another, that touch itself triggers interesting signals that we're now following up on. And hopefully in a year or two, I'll be back to, to talk about those.